This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Hey, I'm Primitive Tim, and today I'm heading out on the biggest road trip of my life. I'm gonna be going up to North Florida, to Apalachicola, through Georgia, and up to Tennessee. In Apalachicola, I'm gonna be meeting up with a bunch of other reptile and amphibian people. So stay tuned, and uh, hopefully we find some really awesome animals. All right, so after like five hours on the road, I'm finally in Apalachicola National Forest. Now Apalachicola has had a lot of rain lately. You can hear a cricket frog over there. And so um, these vernal pools pop up and the frogs absolutely love it. So right now I'm hearing a lot of cricket frogs and I'm seeing them hop around. We'll check out a few cricket frogs and um, we'll move on to whatever else we find. This is gonna be a really exciting trip and I'm just I'm really happy to be out here in the woods finally. Now these little guys are super tiny and I want to get, show you exactly how tiny they are. I mean, they're just about as big as the joint of my, of my forefinger. So I'm going to see if I can catch one and give you guys a little bit of a reference here. All right, I think I got one here. Ah, they can just about squeeze through anything. All right, so this right here is actually a pretty big one, but um, they're really cool little frogs. And this is, whoa, this is an adult here. Here, there he is. This is an adult. And so um, they're out here breeding in this vernal pool and they're, they're just so numerous. I mean, there's probably a couple of thousand in this entire pool and 10 of them jump away at every step. There he is, he's laying down. Look at him, what a funny little frog. He thinks he's hiding, there he is. Ah. So I can't hold him onto him too long or else he'll dry out. So I'm gonna put them back in the water, let them rehydrate. Cause that skin is permeable. So they'll be able to lose water out of the, through their skin really quickly. So it's important that they stay wet. Also, you'll wanna wet your hands before you hold them cause they'll absorb the oils off your skin. So that's not good for them. So we're gonna let this little guy go. So this little girl right here, this is the green and all. And what's cool about her is a second ago I was filming her and she was brown. So she can change from green to brown and brown to back to green. And this really has to do with somewhat the mood. She looks a little bit skinny so she may have been laying eggs. And you can see she's got this, this dark, if she's, if she's brown it'll be lighter, if she's green it'll be darker. And it's just a little, just kind of a, a patterned stripe down the back. I'm gonna let her go, see if she'll, she's probably gonna jump here in a second. But um, really cool lizards, and um, have a good day, little lizard. Check out the camouflage on this lizard. To anyone coming by, it's basically invisible. Okay, so check out this little guy. I mean, it's absolutely tiny. But what this is, it's a newly metamorphosized toad. And this is most likely a southern toad but just look how stinking tiny it is. I mean, I thought these were crickets at first. I saw them jumping around and um, they're just so little. I mean, it takes them a few bounds to get across my hand, but um, this, is, this is pretty cool to see them like this. They're just coming out of the water, changing from tadpoles to uh, little toadlets. So I'm gonna let them back, go back by the bank. All right, so I'm sure you can hear all that. That's a lot of cricket frogs and barking tree frogs. And so um, there's some pools back here we're gonna check out. But I mean, it's dark out here. But we're after some frogs, so it's worth it. All right, so this guy right here, this is Florida's biggest native tree frog. And uh, what he's done here, he looks extra fat, doesn't he? He's puffed himself up, because normally in a situation like this, a snake is gonna be trying to eat him. So if he can puff himself up big enough, it's gonna be really difficult for that snake to swallow. So if the snake's not big enough, the, it'll have to let him go. But um, I'm gonna let him go anyway, of course, because I'm not gonna eat you. But uh, this is the barking tree frog right here. He's the one making all the noise. 
And um, they're just absolutely cool little uh, tree frogs here. Man, look how fat he got. That's just full of air, but. <laughs> Being Florida's largest native tree frog, they sure do make a lot of noise. And so, kind of own up to their biggest tree frog status right here. But man, this is a, this is a nice sized male. Oh no, he just jumped on the camera. Okay, so I found the absolute cutest creature in the world. And I've got to be very gentle with it because it's just a baby. Now this is a box turtle. And so when they hatch out of the egg, they're a little bit flatter than their parents as far as like the, the dome of their shell. And they're just absolutely tiny. But that little face there is gonna be exactly the same as their parents. It's gonna have the same shape, a little bit of a beak there. But um, this is just the cutest. Now this guy was probably born last summer. They'll, they'll lay their eggs in the spring, or their mate in the spring, lay their eggs, and then um, they'll hatch toward the end of the summer. So this guy is a, is a yearling here, but you can see he's still really small. The edges of his shell will bend a little bit. And so it's important that we're real gentle with it. Now look at him, he just wants to get away and, and we'll, let him, we'll let him leave, but we just gotta look at him. He's got this, look at that little tail there. That's so cool. <laughs> and he's just, I mean, he's tiny, but he's still got these little claws. I mean, it's just, it's just super cool how small they are, but fully functional. And um, another cool thing about them is they're omnivores. If they can get like a, a grasshopper or some kind of insect, they'll eat that. Also carry on, if they find a dead animal, they may consume some of that. So that's pretty cool that, you know, a harmless little turtle like this will actually, um, eat meat so but what a cool little guy I'm so glad I found this and so we're gonna let this little guy go and um good luck little guy don't cross any more roads all right I'm going to a tent to catch this lizard extremely fast so we'll see how this goes When I was a kid, my granddad always told me that if you want to catch fish, you got to hold your mouth just right. So I'm applying this same concept to catching lizards. All right, I actually got it. So this little guy right here, this is the fence lizard. And they're just absolutely awesome little lizards. And this guy, you know, they're super fast, but this little guy right here is actually just chilling on my fingers. He's totally calm, which is really abnormal. So I'm kind of lucky that he's doing that. Now a little trick I've learned is you can put them to sleep actually. And you'll do that by just rubbing their belly. And after you rub their belly a few times, they'll begin to calm down and you can actually lay them on their back, just like this. And he's frozen, you see? Now when I flip him over, he'll come right back to life. So I'm just gonna carefully grab him again. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but right there on the belly, he's got these bright blue scales, and it's just two strips right down the sides of the belly. Now, basically, this is kind of a status symbol. And so he's saying, the brighter the blue and the more blue he's got, means he's a bigger and badder male. So females are going to find that attractive. And so when he's showing off to some females, he's going to be doing push-ups. Also up under this throat here, he's got a little bit of blue as well. Let's see if we can get his throat up. There you go. He's got a little bit of blue up under there as well. So he'll, he'll put that chin up and start doing some push-ups and uh, head bobs. And the females are going to find that really attractive. And they may allow him to mate with them, you know, if he's the top-notch kind of guy. So this is a male, of course, and um, you can tell by all that blue. And in the springtime, which is right now, that's when they get the brightest blue. And so it's really cool to find one this time of year when they're just so vibrant. Now, the reason this lizard is being so still is because basically movement attracts predators. And so if he's still and acting like he's not a real creature, a predator might just walk right by him. Now, if that predator gets too close, it's going to take off like lightning. And so it's really cool to watch them do that. But this guy, he's just enjoying my body warmth. We've got a little bit of sun coming, 
So uh, he's probably about ready to take off here pretty soon. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how fast I can be when I release it. There he goes. Dang, he's gonna bite me. He's gonna bite me so bad. Oh man, it's huge. Oh man, he just went after the mic. Dang. All right, all right, chill, chill out, chill out. You're okay. You're all right, snake. You're all right. There we go. That's it. That's a good snake. Now, this is a banded water snake or a Florida water snake, kind of the same thing there. But um, this is a nice size one right here. This is actually a really nice size one. All right, so. Um, Obviously, this is a very well-behaved snake. It did bite at me a few times, but generally, once they do a few strikes, they're not so bad. And um, this one, it's pretty calm. And that's how, and that's the way handling snakes goes. Generally, if you're calm with them, they're gonna chill out a lot quicker. Now, this is a pretty big female, and I'm I'm gonna go ahead and guess that she's got some babies in here. So what what's cool about the snake is it has live young. And so here pretty soon, late spring, early summer, she'll start popping out her babies. And so all in, all in like the back half of her body, it's just gonna be all baby snakes. And so they'll come out live and ready to go. So once she has her babies, those babies will run off, they'll disperse off into the wild, and um, hopefully they'll make it. But um, a lot of the snakes do end up getting eaten by birds of prey and uh, wading birds like herons and egrets. So. But uh, that's the natural order here. So we're gonna put her right back on her stump there and uh, let her hang out because this is an impressive snake here. And it's so important that when you're, when you're on uh, springs and stuff, you gotta look out for these guys because they are pretty common and um, they're totally harmless. They're not out to get you. And as you can see, this one was just calmly sitting there and uh, didn't really even react until my hand was right on top of her. But um such an amazing snake here so <laughs> I'm gonna let her go right here on this uh, on the stump here this right here is the infamous water moccasin or cottonmouth and um right now he's doing his defensive thing right now so he's got his head cocked up and he's opening it up now what that does is you'll notice the actual snake has great camouflage. It's very dark, it's gonna blend in with these places very well. But when it opens its mouth up like that, the inside of its mouth is bright white. So that stands out, and there's a huge contrast between that and usually what the background is. Normally it's not gonna be found on a sand road like this, but of course this one was. So this is really cool to find one like this, and of course it's highly venomous, you do not wanna take a bite from this animal, but um, Nonetheless, it's an awesome snake. Now normally I don't like to mess with venomous snakes, but he is sitting in the middle of the road, and um, or if anyone were to come through, you'd likely get hit and get killed. And so I'm gonna get him off the road, and I'm gonna use, I happen to have a, some bow wood laying in my truck, so I'm gonna get him off the road here. Oh, we've got a car coming too, so. Let me get up under there. There we go. <laughs> there he is. It didn't even strike at me once. So that's a nice little water moccasin we had there. Or a uh, cotton mouth. Now this is the pygmy rattlesnake. Now what's incredible is he's actually very well camouflaged with the road. He's got he's got a base of really light color and then these dark spots all along the back. And so it's pretty cool to see a snake that actually uh, blends in with the road. You may be able to tell he's rattling his tail back here, but there's no sound. And actually his little tail only has like a few buttons on it and it's not gonna make any sound. So basically his rattle is totally useless. But um, this is a venomous snake, of course, being a rattlesnake. And uh, so we want to keep our hands off of it. But it's pretty easy to tell what it is. It's got all these spots along the back. It's a light gray with dark spots. 
And um, if you look at the tail, it'll tend to be kind of a yellowish color, and it'll be a very small rattles, hence the name pygmy rattlesnake. Um, I personally know someone that was bitten, and he said it is not a fun experience, so um, handling a, a snake like this is just a, a poor idea. Now as always, I want to get the snake off the road before I leave, because another car could come through here and um, run it over. So basically what I want to do here is get a nice long stick. All right, now he's slithering, so let's see here. Look at him go. <laughs> Go, go. All right, so this snaky looking creature right here is actually not a snake. This is what's known as a glass lizard. And so basically it's a lizard, but it has no legs. And so everything about it is like a lizard, except no legs. So sometimes they're called glass snakes. And the reason they're called glass lizards, that's the correct term, is because they'll break their tail really easily. So if you're gonna catch one, you have to be very careful and not break that tail. And basically, the tail is the back part of the, is the back half of the body. So we gotta be really careful if we're gonna mess with it, not to touch that tail, because it'll pop right off and, um, the length of the lizard will be cut off and um, it's just not good for the lizard to lose a tail, although they'll generally, generally survive. This is a healthy, healthy adult right here. And actually, everything from this point down, this is all tail, from here all the way down. And so really just about more than half of its body is tail. But I'm um, just an amazing creature right here. I mean, it just doesn't, seem possible for there to be a lizard. Now what makes it a lizard, not a snake, pretty much all in the head. If you look at its head, it's got a very lizardy head, and um, if it'll stick out its tongue for us, you'll be able to see that it doesn't have a tongue like a snake does. But they do flick their tongue just like a snake does, but the shape of the tongue is totally different. Also, these guys have ears. Right up here on the side, he's got an ear, and so he'll use that for listening. Snakes are essentially deaf, and so they're not gonna have that ear like this lizard does. But man, what an incredible lizard. The colors, the pattern, I mean, everything about this lizard just screams amazing. So he was heading off the road, so we're gonna get him off the road, and finally I found something I can pick up, and I'm really happy about that. So here's to the glass lizard, a good foot and a half or so. That's a good sized lizard right there. All right, so the mosquitoes are getting really bad, so I'm gonna get you off the road. Man, this thing's lucky he's got scales, because the Skeeters can't get through that, but um, let's get him off the road. All right, so this cool little snake right here, this is a, a banded water snake. And it's just a little bit different from the one we saw earlier today. But um, as you can see, this guy's got some banding on him. Seems to be pretty calm right now. The belly is uh, very, very vibrant. It's got a lot of cool pattern on the belly. But um, wow, this one's really calm. <laughs> it's kind of surprising. But um, tonight there's a lot of frog activity going on, so he's just crossing the road going from one pool to another, and uh, more than likely, he's gonna be dining on frogs tonight. So they call it a uh, Nerodia fasciata pictoventris, and that's because the belly is so patterned. Picta meaning picture, and then ventris, ventral, means the belly, so. This is a pretty cool little snake. Man, he's just content to glide through my hands. Look at that. It's, it's like a treadmill for snakes. But uh, we're going to get him off the road and uh, let him go dine on some uh, delicious frogs. Now check out this animal right here. This is the copperhead. And this is just, it's an amazing creature. First off, it's got camouflage that compares with nothing else. This camouflage is just absolutely perfect for leaf litter areas like this, where you've got a lot of hardwoods and stuff with these big leaves. If this snake coils up in, those, in that leaf litter, it's gonna basically disappear. 
Also, check out this head. The head is just immaculate. I mean, it's just, I mean, the angles on it, I mean, everything is just perfect about it. And check out those eyes. The eyes have, I mean, the eyes are incredible. Any snake in the Southeast US that has a vertical pupil like that is gonna be venomous. So this copperhead does have venom and it is very harmful, but of all the, of all the venomous snakes in the Southeast, it's probably got the least toxic. However, you do not want to take a bite off of this animal. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, this is just an incredible creature right here. And right now I'm in central Georgia and I'm on these clay dirt roads and I was just cruising along and this guy right here was just slithering across like mad. I mean, people see these snakes and they try to kill them. And so this guy probably knows his best bet is just to run like mad because otherwise someone's going to try and chop his head off or shoot him. All right, so I've made it up to Tennessee, and I'm, I came up here for a primitive archery meet, but after the meet, I found this awesome creature right here, and this is, a, this is actually a really good-sized black racer, and um, I showed him to the owner, and the owner thought it was pretty cool, and um, the reason yeah. being is because he says, this guy eats copperheads, and they are known to eat other snakes, so for this snake to be around his farm, this is really important for him because he doesn't, he's gonna wanna have these guys more than he's gonna want to have copperheads. It's funny how this guy, I've been holding him for a while and he's just still, he's fired up. I mean, this creature would like to bite me in the face, but um, I'm not gonna let him. And it's funny, because he's only going for my face. Now he's looking at the mic. You want that mic, huh? But, um, just a, whoa! Just a really cool creature right here. Thanks for joining me on this road trip. I had so much fun. Being able to see all these animals and going all the way from Florida to Georgia up through Tennessee, it was awesome experiencing a diversity of areas where you can find different kinds of stuff. Now be sure to check me out on Facebook and Twitter because I'll be tweeting and posting pictures the whole way through the trip and so you guys can watch the progression and then watch the show later. So I, I'll give little sneak peeks of what sort of stuff I find. I also got to learn a lot of primitive archery stuff from the guys up in Tennessee now, if you're interested in that, you can um, check in the description below or just um, find where I replied to a comment somewhere and go to my main channel where I do my own videos that aren't really animal related. It's more primitive stuff related. So that's my other passion along with animals and just everything nature. So until next time, find a new way to appreciate nature. I've been diving with sharks for 14 years. All kinds of sharks. Yep, even that one. But I'm not here to convince you to like sharks. I'm here to ask questions. This is ABTV.